Hello, I'm Sally Bowery. You're watching Seven's rolling coverage of the Queensland flood disaster. As we go to air, 75% of the state is disaster declared. The immediate threat is in the southeast. Toowoomba and Grantham are struggling to deal with the aftermath of Monday's inland tsunami, and Brisbane and Ipswich face unprecedented flooding over the next 48 hours. Good afternoon, I'm Robert Ovadia. This is the situation so far. At least 10 people have lost their lives this week, but police expect that number to rise. The number of people missing is 67, with serious concerns for 18 of these people. Major flooding has begun in the cities of Brisbane and Ipswich. 40,000 properties will be affected as rivers hit record levels higher even than the ones that we saw in 1974. Power has been cut to tens of thousands of residents with hundreds of thousands likely to be plunged into darkness over the next few hours. Evacuation centres are operating across the region and more than 1,500 people have already left their homes. Brisbane could run out of drinking water if the floods affect the city's treatment plants. Residents have been asked not to waste water despite being surrounded by it. Brisbane residents are preparing for a flood peak to rival the disaster of 1974, but this time it's a much larger city with many more people and buildings likely to come into the line of the floods. Already 35 suburbs are at least partly underwater and 20,000 homes are likely to flood. Households are packing up their possessions and fleeing to higher ground. I'm just going to go a bit of gear from home hopefully. Whereabouts is home? Uh, just down the street here. They've been reminded of the many towns in regional areas that have done the same thing several times this season alone. I think we need to draw inspiration from their resilience and draw inspiration and courage from the experiences they've had and are continuing to face. There's a call for caution with water. It seems completely ridiculous that I would be saying to people in this circumstance that we should uh, conserve water. We have massive amounts of water flowing past our doorsteps. However, it is possible that our water treatment plants could be affected by this flood and we may see some issues around drinking water in days to come. If that happens, the army could deliver bulk supplies of bottled water. There's also a squeeze on cash, with a rush on withdrawals leaving some ATMs empty. The Reserve Bank will be working with our uh, banking uh, system, uh, with obviously the individual banks to ensure that there are cash supplies. A significant number of houses will start going under during this afternoon's high tide. The water is likely to peak again 24 hours later and could remain high for up to four days. Workers are being urged to stay home or risk being stranded at their workplace, unable to drive out. Making life more difficult, power is being cut across the city to avoid the risk of electrocution. Extra troops and army helicopters have been called in. That will mean that there are 15 helicopters available throughout Queensland and one of the biggest sources of work for those helicopters will be the very difficult, very urgent and occasionally heartbreaking task of search and rescue in the Lockyer Valley. In Ipswich, the Bremer River is rising rapidly, but with some good news, the peak has been revised downwards. It's now expected to reach 20.5 metres, equal to the 1974 flood. Already, a life has been lost here when a four-year-old boy was swept away by raging floodwaters. Families are being separated. This woman's daughter is on the other side of the floods. Um, she's got a two-year-old daughter and my son's with her. They've packed everything up into the roof and they're just moving to the end of the street. There's no way out. So they're just sort of waiting with the neighbours to see patiently how they're going to get out of there. Anna Bly has confirmed a mother and child who were in a car that was swept away by floodwaters in Toowoomba on Monday have been found alive, but the father is still missing. Rachel Baker says... Continue with rising there uh, with a peak expected tomorrow, but then we'll still see those levels remaining uh, fairly high over the next couple of days. In fact, uh, leading through to at least around Saturday or so, we'll still see major uh, river levels right across the region. And in terms of the weather at this stage, is it cleared a little in Brisbane? What are we expecting there? Yeah, there is some good news, I suppose, out of all of this. After some incredible falls over the past couple of days, we've got considerably lighter rainfall on the forecast for the next week at least, uh, with only light showers expected across parts of southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales. But, of course, all eyes now will be on uh, the southeastern parts of the country, where the heavy rain is forecast to move through parts of Victoria, southern New South Wales and Tasmania. And reporter Erin Edwards is in Ipswich. Erin, the peak's still a few hours away there. What's it like there at the moment? 
Oh, Sally, look, the water is already so high, even though it has to climb another metre to a metre and a half. We just went uh, on a boat down the main street of Ipswich, uh, Brisbane Street, and there is water already up to the rooftops of some of these businesses along that road. Ipswich is a very proud heritage city. We've met dozens of people today who have had been forced to leave their homes with very little, and they're obviously worried about what they will return to. The latest we have is that 3,000 homes have water over their floors. Another 1,000 are expected by about 5 o'clock when it peaks here today. So the peak has been revised down though, hasn't it, Erin? But at this stage, what you're saying is it's still going to be very devastating for those people. Oh, we are talking about possibly 45,000 people in all of those homes who are going to lose possibly everything they own. They may have put things onto higher ground, but a lot of them um, you know, are very wary. They remember the 74 floods. They all know where the, the marker was in the 74 floods. In most cases, it was above the light switches, definitely above the windows. So they know that it is going to be a long road to recovery. There have also been some horrible things happen here overnight. Um, there are reports of looters um, in businesses who are under with no power. Um, the mayor, Paul Pasali, has said if they are caught, he wants to use them as flood markers. He doesn't have any time for anyone who would take advantage of people in these situations. Now, in terms of the evacuation centres, how many are there set up at the moment and do they have to actually create more? Look, they are looking at creating more, certainly, with um, the number of people they are expecting to leave their homes and come into town. There are five evacuation centres at the moment. Officially, there are 1,100 people in them. Um, unofficially, they're saying it could be as high as 1,700 people. And Erin, I can imagine the morale would be very low there at the moment. Can you just sort of give us an indication of how people are feeling? Look, there certainly is panic. Um, our hotel where we're staying was evacuated this morning because it began taking on water into the car park. I met a young girl who'd only moved to Ipswich three days ago. Her whole life was packed mm. up in her car. That is in the basement of this hotel. She thinks she has probably lost everything. They are resilient out here, though. I mean, the locals, obviously, you know, they have been through these sorts of things before. And I think, really, the only thing that is saving them is that they know that they are alive. I mean, they've all seen what has happened, the tragedies in the Lockyer Valley and Toowoomba. I must have had about six or seven people say that to me today. I don't, I don't care that I've lost everything, but I have my life and I have my family. Mm. Thank you. Peter Doherty.